It was 2015, and psychology professor Jim Smurdick sat in his office at Mohawk Valley Community College. He took one final look at the three walls surrounding him where constellations of aging pictures hung. Many of the pictures were of his after-school program called Kids and Coaches, where volunteer undergraduate students are coaches who plan and carry out pro-social group activities for emerging children. Snapshots of Joyous groups held playful poses in the pictures, and they now stared back at him quietly. After 37 years of directing the program and teaching for the college, it was time for a changing of the guard, his time to retire. Yet he wondered, did any of it make a difference? Four years earlier, I flew across the country from El Paso to Utica, New York, to meet Professor Smurdick. I wanted to participate in his after-school program to learn more about it from my doctoral studies. I heard great things from MVCC newsletters and how it was based on the principles of humanistic psychology, which is a school of psychology that focuses on the whole person and stresses that each individual is unique, inherently good, and has the freedom of choice to determine meaning in life. On that late fall afternoon, I stood on the grass of the campus quad, and across the lawn, a tall, mustached man approached, followed by 15 children and 10 young adults. I was to be the 11th coach for the day's event. But how was I supposed to help the children reach their potentials? Was there some kind of procedure to follow? What was the secret? The group set up and separated into a game of kickball, frisbee, and finger painting. I wasn't sure what to do and just stood there watching. After a few moments, I felt a hand on my shoulder and turned to see Jim. He pointed to the group and said, let the child lead, now go. And I went. There are over 10 million school-aged children participating in some type of after-school activity. Some programs are geared towards sports, academics, religion, or other special interests. These programs are vitally important for the development of youth because schools have little time left for these valuable activities. Young adults and elementary-aged children need to have spaces in which they can experience self-actualizing moments where activities are based in recreation, non-competitive sports, crafts, play, and even a field trip or two. Each person must explore empathy, freedom, and dignity, and leave the world at the door before entering a place of safety and discovery. Yet, these days, leaving the world outside is more challenging because of the increased exposure to threats of senseless murders, racial violence, war, deadly viruses, and environmental destruction. The COVID-19 pandemic social restrictions and lockdowns worsened feelings of loneliness increased rates and levels of anxiety and depression, and disconnected youth from social and cultural ways of coping with the terror of death and suffering. Although social restrictions have eased and threats to life have been reduced, studies continue to find declining levels of empathy, increasing rates of problematic internet use, and physical ailments brought on by mental distress. Social and emotional well-being is key for youth to actualize all of their inner potentials amidst these intense stressors and uncertainties. After-school programs have the potential to support holistic well-being by developing social and emotional intelligences, which are a spectrum of abilities that are associated with understanding and regulating emotions, developing social awareness and empathy, and forming diverse relationships. These are all preventative and protective factors when facing adversities, especially extreme forms of stress and trauma. Jim was a student of Dr. Abraham Lukens, who was an authority in Gestalt psychology for developing group psychotherapies. Jim chose the term emerging to describe the children in his program because it, it aligned with the research of Dr. Lukens, but most significantly with the works of humanistic scholars such as Carl Rogers, Clark Moustakis, and Soretta Perry. Emerging reflects the child's nature, that powerful desire to seek the conditions and resources in which they can become more of themselves. Emerging is optimistic, and it opens the coach's perception to the potentials of the child. So many children are deprived of dignity, and even not treated as people. They are given labels and placed in categories, which, even when used with positive intentions, end up doing more harm than good. The term emerging helps one understand that 
the child is closer to birth than adults, which makes them nearer to knowing the nature of the universe. The child has an effortless ability to live in the here and now, totally immersed in the wonder and rhythms and flow of life. After I took part in the event that fall, I felt a profound sense of meaning. The group activities gave each person the freedom to be, which nurtured a deep sense of value for exploring identity and personal values. I began to realize that Jim's after-school program was not just an event, but rather a paradigm shift into humanistic psychology. There is a Japanese haiku which states, in the dark forest, a berry drops the sound of water. And that is what's most profound, the simplicity of it. The sound of water was not forced, but happened from the berry meeting the water, the moment that the sound of the water came into existence. The after-school program, the pro-social group activities are much like the sound of the water. It happens. The group plays, and that is the universe. That is the impermanent stream of life, all out of nothing. It simply exists. You've heard me use the term self-actualization, and it is important for developing social and emotional intelligences. The term self-actualization was developed by humanistic psychologist Abraham Maslow to describe a moment when a person is fully integrated and immersed in an activity to where they are transcending older ways of being in favor of new potentials. Play is essential for self-actualization. Without it, there's a loss of vitality in life. Play provides protective factors as it helps youth cope, adapt, and overcome life challenges. According to the research of cognitive ethologist Mark Beckoff, as well as psychologist Luis Casalino, playing provides the brain with stimulation that supports neuroplasticity and the integration of neural networks that were previously dissociated. This fosters emotion regulation, creativity, flexibility, and decision-making, all of which help youth adapt to the changingness and unpredictability of life. So, in 2015, I decided to bring Jim's after-school program here to El Paso. Our city needed a program like this. El Paso is a diversifying community and has so much in common with Utica. Both are multicultural centers. The way to build a strong community is through relationships, especially amongst youth. However, I was not sure if I could pull the program off like Jim had done for so many years. Much like he began, I had no funding. But even more challenging, I had no coaches, I had no children, I had no place to hold events. All ideas are great when they're in your head, but one cannot create meaningful change on dreams alone. I wondered if I could be courageous enough to take upon this after-school journey. When I began to feel hopeless, I heard Jim say, now go. I spoke with my wife, Sandra, who works at an elementary school about starting our own after-school program, and we decided to turn this idea into a reality. We kept to Jim's original program methodology. I enlisted the help of volunteers from El Paso Community College, and she recruited the children from the elementary school, and we all planned the pro-social group activities together. I am proud to say that Kids and Coaches El Paso was a success from the start. We saw children emerge in their social and emotional intelligences. Parents and teachers told us how the program created such positive changes in the children. And I received feedback from the college volunteers who told me the program was meaningful and even legit. <laughs> Which I am told is a good thing. Our creative events are always tailored to the interests of the group, which brings us closer together. These included memories such as Extreme beach ball, balloon ping pong, cupcake decorating, and always enjoying a snack or a frosty treat. I can say without hesitancy that I've learned so much from humanistic psychology and our after-school program, and much like the children we work with, I continue to emerge. I believe that after-school programs that develop social and emotional intelligences will help fashion a world that has greater care, compassion, and empathy for all forms of life. We must bring people together in ways that unlock the potentials of a human community through growth-promoting relationships. Empathy, freedom, and play are invaluable investments in our youth, 
and these young people will create a future that they wish to live in. On Jim's last day at MVCC, after a week of taking down pictures in his office, he sat amongst boxes full of old photographs. He pondered whether any of it made a difference. He sat back in his chair, closed his eyes, and a special memory came to visit him from an event in the early 90s. The coaches brought the children to dinner at an upscale restaurant and to see a touring Broadway musical at the Stanley Theater. On the long bus ride home, a little girl was dozing off to sleep, but glanced at Jim. Jim asked her, how did you like today? The little girl responded, this was the best day of my life. You see, Jim was showing where humanistic psychology should lead us in the 21st century. As we move forward, we come to realize that it is our relationships that will always be the most meaningful parts of our lives. And in this shared existence, we are all still children emerging. Thank you.